Hello, and welcome to my Coach Helder channel. Today, I'm going to be going over getting a convex angle on your knife, and I will be using the Wicked Edge Convex Edge Kit. So if you're not familiar with a convex angle, what exactly is a convex angle? Well, you're probably more familiar with the V-Grind. So you have this angle here, this angle here, giving you that nice V-shape on the blade of your knife. Well, with a convex edge, just think about that edge being more rounded. So instead of having that perfect V, you have more of a rounding. And what is the purpose of that? Well, when it comes to hunting, bushwhacking, even tactical purposes, having that convex edge on your blade will bode better. It'll last longer. It'll maintain its sharpness that much longer, giving a much better lifespan as well as performance to your knife. Now, when it comes to the convex edge kit from Wicked Edge, there are two choices. There is a standard and there is the ultimate. The ultimate obviously comes with a lot more components and that is the one that I picked up that I received from Wicked Edge. First off, you have your handles, all right? These happen to be red and white, one side being coarse and the white side being fine. With the standard kit, you get one pack of these, so you get two handles all together. With the ultimate kit, you actually get six handles. Inside the kit, you have a lighted jeweler's loop. And as far as the standard kit, when it comes to the lapping film, it comes with 30 micron film as well as 15 micron film. Now with the ultimate kit, you are getting the 30 and the 15 uh, lapping film, but you're also getting the nine micron, the six micron, three micron, and one micron lapping film. You're also going to want to have some alcohol, as well as some paper towels in order to clean off the lapping film, which plays a big factor in this sharpening process. So let's begin our setup process. I have the blank handles here. Uh, the rubber has already been affixed on them. And what I wanna do is go ahead and take the first two sheets that I have here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take the 30 micron, peel one of the sheets of lapping film off, and that would be the green, and I will be putting that on the coarse side. We are good to go. Go ahead and repeat that now. Now I'll go ahead and take the 15 micron, peel one of the pieces of the film off, this one is going to go on the fine side. And since I have the ultimate kit, I can go ahead and go through all of the other films. Same exact process. Okay, so my knife is ready to go. Found the sweet spot. Have the correct angle. Use the Sharpie. All the good stuff that, once again, you can find in the other videos that I am listing in the description. Now, when it comes to the convex edge, the convex edge generally adds about two degrees to the edge of your knife. So as an example, if I have this particular knife set at 20 degrees, if I wanted the final convex edge to be 20 degrees, I'd actually have to go back, reprofile my knife to 18 degrees so that it'll accommodate for those extra roughly two degrees that, it'll, that it will add, getting me at about 20 degrees. So I do want you to keep that in mind because that is a crucial component. As I do have this set, let's say at a 20 degree angle, I'm gonna go ahead and move that up to the 21 degrees to help accommodate for that offset in the contour edge. And I'll go ahead, get my handles on. On this lap and film, everything is very, very fine, so very easy for it to get clogged. And that's why Wicked Edge highly, highly, highly recommends to utilize rubbing alcohol and paper towels pretty much throughout this whole process. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that my knife is good, free of debris. Few different nuances when it comes to sharpening, utilizing the lapping film as opposed to the other more coarse stones. Uh, the lapping film, of course, is very, very delicate. So if you were to just use the same motion that uh, you've seen me use in the past, that's not gonna work out very well for the film. Film is very delicate and you'll end up ripping it right off probably within your first few strokes. You wanna grab towards the top and that's where you wanna apply your pressure because if you do apply the pressure lower or in the middle here, you might end up scratching up your blade and that's a no-no. So as I mentioned, just using this upstroke, I'm just kind of walking towards the front of the blade itself, keeping safe. And as far as the pressure, as I mentioned, one side, of course, we have one dominant hand that's usually gonna be a little bit stronger than the other. As far as pressure, a lot of times it's uh, just happening subconsciously. So you definitely wanna be aware of that. 
and thinking of if I'm right hand dominant, I'm going to apply that much more pressure, most likely. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you're matching that on the left side. As I mentioned, you want to put a little bit more pressure than you would with the more coarse stones. So as I'm walking or as I'm pressing in, I'm thinking about just denting that rubber a bit with each stroke, making sure that I'm applying equal pressure with my dominant and non-dominant hand. Thinking anywhere between 20 and 30 strokes. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and clean off my blade once again. And then I also want to go ahead and clean off the lapping film using the paper towel and the rubbing alcohol. So I'll go ahead and turn on my jeweler's loop. So scratches in the center and shininess along the edge. Once again, that all really depends on how much pressure you are putting on your lapping film or on the actual, uh, let's say, handles. And it also depends, of course, on the type of steel that your blade is made out of. And if you aren't seeing that, once again, just requires a bit more work. Get back there still utilizing the course and do another 20 to 30 strokes on there. Remember to clean the blade and clean the lapping film. And another tidbit that I got from Wicked Edge, as you are just doing a little bit of rotating here with the loop itself, you'll see different reflection that's going on, especially with the light that's inside, which really is that light reflecting off the curvature of that convex edge that you have been working on. So the key here would be to keep working it until you really do start seeing that convex or rounded edge on your blade with your loop. If you aren't quite seeing that yet, once again, just keep repeating the process, doing your 20 to 30 strokes with the lapping film, making sure to clean everything off in between. And what we're looking for here is that scratchless bevel. Once you do have that, regardless of how many, uh, let's say, mini sessions it took you to get there, now it's time for us to move on. A couple tips if this isn't really working as fast for you or as smooth as you expected it to be, there are a couple things that can help. One, I've gone over already a few times, keep cleaning the film and keep cleaning your knife. The second tip would be to use some type of lubricant. Wicked Edge also recommends that just using simple Windex will uh, do an excellent job and fill the void. And what that Windex will do is of course help to keep the film that much more cleaner because it helps to remove all of those little shavings and uh, gunk that's being collected throughout the sharpening process. Okay, so for here, moving on, I'm gonna go to the fine that's on this handle, which is the actual 15 micron. Once again, doing the same amount of passes, same actual process that we did with the 30 micron film, 20 to 30 passes. Okay, so that was the 15 micron from here. I wanna make sure that I go ahead and clean off the edge of my blade with the rubbing alcohol and paper towel. And of course, also cleaning up the lapping film. And from there, I wanna go ahead and take a look with my loop, rounding it a bit, looking for that context, making sure that the scratches are gone. And that is looking really, really good. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are buying a convex angled knife from the factory, never been sharpened with the Wicked Edge, once again, Wicked Edge recommends that you go ahead and reprofile that knife. Uh, go ahead, start with that regular V grind, getting it down to that profile, and then from there, restart this process for the convex edge. And the reason being for that is obviously there's a bunch of different factories. They all use different standards. Uh, they might not be as precise as Wicked Edge. And once again, once you do work with these convex angles and start working with applications like that, that's really where these points come out and you start seeing those imperfections. So instead of wasting time and wasting more steel, uh, go ahead, follow the Wicked Edge guidelines and you'll be good to go. So bottom line, if you are looking for an extremely precise way to get a convex edge on your knives, definitely take a look at this edge kit by Wicked Edge.